It is uh, Friday, January the 26th, 2024. Thank you for joining me again here as we're winding down these daily devotionals for, for this week as we've been talking about the purpose of humanity. And I want to clearly say it again, just, just twofold. First, love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. And secondly, obey him in the same fashion. It's found in Luke 10, 27, when the attorney had come to Jesus, said, how, how do I get eternal life? I gotta know. And Jesus said, well, you know the law. What do you read there? And here's his answer. He answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and, love, and your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> so we said yesterday that this human nature of ours, it creates a spiritual warfare where we just battle with the spirit of God and we're supposed to mortify the deeds of our flesh. And, and so I, I told you yesterday as we concluded that we're gonna talk about the part that the Christian church, the place of the Christian church in helping the believer live loving God and obeying him. So I wanna tell, tell you something I think has been maybe one of the most important things I learned in my life and God's most cherished relationship is with people. Hmm. God loves people. He loved you. He loved you so much he sent his son. Take your place, take his wrath for your sin so you wouldn't receive the punishment if you would choose to believe in him. So we too must be in relationship with each other, united through our common devotion to God. And so in Acts 2, you have a description of the activity of the church. And by the way, it hasn't changed much in 2,000 years. You read the story of the church, the early church, in the book of Acts, the entire book of Acts, and <clears throat> there is a, a gathering of things that, will help us love God and obey him if we're in a church that teaches and preaches the word of God, doesn't just seek to make you feel good because you've been beat down so much by the world. No, no, you already are more than a conqueror through Christ who loves you. Quit swallowing everything that's said to you. Get to a church that teaches, breaks down the word of God, even teaches through scripture so you'll understand, here's the commands, here's what we do to obey it and get in relationship with people who are in pursuit of God to love him and obey him. That may even just be a, a house church for some of us. It may, it may just be a small group that really, it's not even a house church, it's just a small group who we just got one purpose. We wanna love God more and serve him more. But the church has always been here and God loves his church. And so I'm gonna talk about the church helping us in this part. The gathering of believers retains a traditional significance as a group of people who are united in their common bond in Christ Jesus, brought together so that the people of God could be equipped to do good work and build up the church, the body of Christ, until we come to such a unity in the faith and knowledge of God's Son that we'll be mature and full grown in the Lord, measuring up to the full stature of Christ. That's the intent of the church. You might want to re-listen to that. And how do we do this? We do this by worshiping together, sharing our faith in God with non-believers, learning God's ways together, embracing the qualities that enable us to embody those ways, and wisely managing our resources for kingdom purposes. And aggressively addressing the challenges facing needy people and developing deep relationships with other believers that provide encouragement, accountability, and stability, a stability. See, what's happened is the things I just said, like, uh, well, when we take care of the needs of people, some churches, that's the emphasis, and they forgot about loving God and obeying him first. And they're doing maybe something that is obedience to him, but at the Neglect of things that are just as important or more important at some times. Because when we address aggressively the challenges that face needy people, it says, see, this doesn't just have to be done corporately. It can be done individually as well. 
sometimes that becomes the only emphasis of our life and that then that becomes more important to us than God. Anything can, by the way. See, it's become fashionable for American Christians to downplay the need to be intimately involved in church life, but the Bible is littered with references to our responsibility to actively participate in the church. Particular aspects of our attempts to know, love, and serve God with all our heart, mind, strength, and soul can be accomplished through intentional and significant involvement in church life. I'm not telling you it can't be done otherwise, but that's one of the significant ways it can be done. And I think that our complete purpose and meaning in life is when we really sell out and say, God, I love you. You show me what I'm to do. I obey you. Show me how to obey you. And I think sometimes the best way is invest in a body of believers who together, whether it's 10 people, 100 people, 2,000 people, or whatever, we're doing this for the glory of God. And I know what happens is a lot of churches become self-serving and now you're not really serving God, you're serving yourselves. So much of what I've been talking about all week can be visualized by an analogy of the husband and wife compared to Christ and the church because God uses that analogy himself. In the mutually submitted covenant of marriage where God uses the man to illustrate and represent Christ, the wife representing us in the body, is to be moved toward her husband in deep affection, adoration, and submission. Read it, Ephesians chapter 5. That kind of devotion that I am to give to Christ as a follower in the analogy is facilitated, catch this now, is facilitated by the husband initiating and maintaining the same love for his wife that Christ has for his church. It's a love that's sacrificial, without condition of reciprocity, and all-encompassing. In that atmosphere, attitude and spirit, the wife's love for her husband thrives. When she's loved like Christ loves his church, it's easy for a, a woman to love her husband. Since God has demonstrated that kind of love for us, our love toward him should thrive all the time. By the way, God's already loved us like this. I'm not saying every husband loves his wife like that, nor that every wife is devoted and adores and submitted to her husband. And you can debate with me about it if you want to, but that's not the point today. It's just the analogy of Christ and his church. As a part of his church, I'm to love him because of how he's loved me. And I'm ministering back my love toward God and my obedience to him at the same time. And then I'm doing that to my fellow human beings because it's overflowing out of me to others. And in a husband and wife relationship, man, when that stuff is going like it ought to go, there's nothing more special on the planet. So how are you loving Jesus? And how are you obeying him? How are you in submission to him? Father, Oh, we have so much to learn about our accountability. We like hiding in a large crowd sometimes, God, because we don't want to account for, man, we disobeyed this week and we enjoyed disobeying and it's time for us to be convicted of that. But man, we can hide today and we don't want to be convicted, but your Holy Spirit's seeking us out. And your love is drawing us near. So help us, God to demonstrate by our changed lives that we are in hot pursuit of loving God and obeying him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I'm going to walk it out. I'm going to walk it out because I have the power of God's Holy Spirit in me and you do too as a believer in Jesus. You receive the down payment of your eternal salvation. Your redemption is at hand. And let's love God and let's obey him. Have a great day.